You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. And welcome back. My name is Eric Hardeman. and I'm here on The Social Workers live radio talk show with Alyssa Lotmore. Welcome back, Alyssa. Hi, Eric. We just finished one interview and we're heading into our next interview here in the studio. We're very excited today to have with us a special guest, Amanda Madison. Amanda Madison is a graduate student in the School of Social Welfare here at the University of Albany. She's also an alum uh, of the school. And uh, in, 19, in sorry, in 2005, Amanda joined the Army National Guard and served until 2011. During her time in active duty, she was deployed to Iraq in 2008 as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom, and she returned to the States in 2009. And as she's come back to school, she has become very active in the veteran student world. And so we wanted to have Amanda here on the show with us to talk about uh, student issues related to being a veteran and sort of get your experience experience about what it's being what it's been like being a veteran in the higher education world so first of all we'd like to welcome you to the social workers welcome to the show amanda thank you it's a pleasure to be here yeah. And you've had a pretty busy, pretty busy week because I know uh, the state and SUNY has done a lot of things with Veterans Day having been on Monday. Um, there's been some panels and I know the governor, uh, Governor Cuomo, announced uh, this week that SUNY and CUNY schools will waive application fees for veterans and their spouses. So there's been a lot going on and you've been kind of a part of some of these panels and on the, on the news. Um, so I'd love to, we're going to sort of hopefully be able to hear a little bit about that as well and some of the things that you've been learning and the information you've been sharing. Yeah, uh, so last week, uh, SUNY put on a conference, uh, Best in Shared Practices for Supporting Military-Affiliated Students. I was uh, honored to attend that and spoke on a student veteran panel about veterans' experiences. Um, I think this is great that the SUNY schools are really stepping up and, and showing that their support for veterans and trying to make each campus veteran-friendly and accessible. So, so let's go back a little bit, and I, w- I want to hear a little bit about how uh, how it was that you, you know, if we could ask, how it was that you joined the military, and what what got you interested in doing that very, very important work, and then sort of how that experience has uh, transformed you, and, and certainly into becoming a graduate student. What what's the impact of also being a veteran for you? And I know there's a couple questions yeah. there, so. Okay, well, we'll start with uh, when I joined uh, the New York National um, Army National Guard back in 2005. I was kind of had part time job. I was had some school, but not a lot of uh, college uh, credits. And I just wanted to do more and I wanted to serve uh, serve the country and and really make an impact for people. Um, So then, you know, I was in the Guard till 2011. And while I was serving in the Guard, I got my bachelor's in psychology here at SUNY Albany. Mm. And, and so what was it like for you coming back and then entering the higher education world and sort of, uh, and I don't want to use the word reconciling, but, but that's, uh, you know, you've got different identities, I would imagine. So you've got the identity as someone who has served and who is, and who is a veteran by definition, but also you have, the de- you, know, you have the identity of being a college student. And so there's sort of a dual, a duality there, I think. Yeah, it was definitely interesting when I... Uh came here for my undergrad because I, I did feel a little bit um, separate from the general student population. Um, and I didn't know quite where I fit in, how I fit in. And I didn't really talk about uh, my veteran identity or the fact that I was in the National Guard. Um, and it wasn't until I found a couple of other student veterans that were at the time, back in 2009, forming a student veteran club here at, um, at SUNY Albany. Um, what has since become the uh, UAlbany Student um, Veterans Association. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What's, what, what does it do for students? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so th- right now, um, it's, it was really a grassroots effort and it start, started with really some small things, just like having a room for students, veterans and military-affiliated students to go to feel like they could find other you know, veterans or other military um, service members and they could study, they could feel welcome, um, they'd have a presence on campus. Um, I know when I was an active member uh, for my undergrad, we did um, 
a, like a yearly event to celebrate the end of the year, um, celebrating the little milestones of you know finishing the finals, tests, and all that. Um, we did events throughout the year, Veterans Day. Um, in fact, the SUNY Albany Veterans Association did um, an event just this Monday at the Campus Center. Mm. So, um, you know, when we, we have listeners throughout the community, and we actually have listeners all over who stream us live and uh, through the Internet. And um, I often wonder when people hear the term veteran, they have a lot of different associations. And some people think that, you know, a veteran is the stereotypical older uh, white male who has served in Vietnam or who, you know... Um, you know, other people may have different uh, stereotypes that they have around what a veteran is, different definitions. Um, but I think we're starting to realize that, that veterans are not all the same and that there's a, a tremendous diversity uh, in terms of who veterans are. And, and so I wonder if you could talk about that, particularly around um, the college student population that are veterans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, there's a lot of misconception about what a veteran is or what a veteran looks like, how mm -hmm. they act, how they are. Um, and some of these things are just um, misnomers from you know popular media and things like that. But if, if you really take the time to sit down and talk to someone that's been in the military, you'll find they have a fascinating life experience and that they're not all the same and their experiences are so different. Um, since uh, 2018, when I got my master's in social work, I realized that one of my favorite things to do is to challenge those assumptions about what a veteran looks like. Um, being a female veteran myself, I, I don't often get recognized for my service and I've since learned how to kind of put that identity out there because I think it's important for people to know that not every veteran is the same. And with there being such a difference and such a diversity, when we're thinking about veterans on campus, and I know you spoke at a panel this week, what are some ways that universities can help with that, the, like sort of the adjustment to college for veterans? Since there is such a, a difference and a diversity, what are things that universities can do to help reach the veterans and make them feel included when there's such a diversity amongst them? Yeah, I think number one is just awareness raising, realizing that you know there's different cultural elements, um, and and having a, a campus and a university that's accepting of of diversity, um, you know, different um, life histories, different viewpoints, all that, different work experience and life experience that veterans bring to the campus, um, and and also just uh, for faculty and staff, you know, just learning about veterans issues, veterans' mm -hmm. topics, culture, uh, military history, and being open to realizing that there's different perspectives out there. Um, other things, I think, is just creating a space for for people to get together and, you know, share their cultures and share their life stories. I think that's an important, having those avenues where uh, people can get together. I often wonder, you know, I, I think about um, for veterans and for maybe even to expand the conversation beyond veterans, but just to think about military personnel or military affiliated personnel. It could be even, uh, you know, folks that, that are currently serving or maybe currently serving in some capacity, um, that the notions of uh, camaraderie and community are really important in military service, that, that people support each other and bond together to mm -hmm. help out and to help um, a military unit, if you will, um, operate effectively, there needs to be camaraderie and, and some connection between people. And so I wonder for college students, does that then become, after someone makes the exit from military service, does it become problematic sometimes to, to not have that? Yeah, it definitely definitely could be problematic because you come from like a, a close unit where you've got everyone's back, everyone's got your back, and then you come to a place where you don't know anyone and there's hundreds of people, which can be very disorienting at first. And I think um, not really knowing whether you're accepted there um, for whatever reason and not knowing if people are interested in, in your life experience and mm -hmm. your military service kind of makes veterans, I believe, hesitant to really talk about those things. So I think a culture that is like open to talking about these things, and I mean, when the, when the veteran's ready, like, because you don't want to just 
uh, typically too too often there's you know people that really misunderstand the culture and will sometimes ask some you know some very inappropriate questions mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. right um, so a lot of time you mentioned a lot about it being able to find a place where you can connect with other veterans and share experiences. Now, in addition to taking classes, you work for the Research Foundation where you do program evaluation for the veterans peer to peer support program. Um, and can you talk a little bit about that was you're talking about, you know, peer being able to talk to each other on campus. And you're also doing this work where you're um, analyzing the elements of peer support between veterans. Can you talk a little bit about that and how maybe the it can apply to veterans in college? Absolutely. So the peer-to-peer -peer support um, evaluation that I've worked on for the past five years has really shown me the advantages of using peer support with veterans. Um, they have a shared experience. They can talk about um, the lingo, the, the cultural, um, the acronyms, you know, all that stuff. They've gone through some basic, you know, shared experiences, basic training, um, that kind of thing. Um, so having that instant connection, it was in a like a peer-based community, a community program, is something that can also work on colleges, so that veterans that are in school can get connected with other veterans mm -hmm. and realize that there's a shared experiences and that they can relate to someone. And once you relate to someone, it opens up the door to relating to more people, more and more. And I think maybe part of one of the implications that I hear in what you're saying too is that. Um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but but that giving back is important to many veterans. And, and I hear this and, and see this in the work that you do and certainly in the conversations that we've had around uh, you Albany students who are veterans and the fact that that you have something to give to them as a veteran yourself, that there's a uh, whether that be just a, you know, a role modeling and kind of serving as someone who can talk about her own experience. Uh, or, but you can also, you've got a perspective on this because of your own personal background uh, that you can share with others who are going through similar situations. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's certainly uh, a lot of different elements there. So, you know, um, sorry, can you, can you repeat that? Yeah, the so question? It, it wasn't really a question. Yeah. I apologize <laughs> for that. But it was really just um, w wondering, you know, w what's the role of giving back for you? Right, right. So so I think, and I, I never want to generalize and stereotype veterans, because I think if we get in the habit of that, we're failing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. all veterans are different, but a commonality um, among most, if not all, is this is the selfless service, the service to others. And I think that is what will unite and hold the the community together um, because you you know you are you are there your purpose at least the way I look at it is to serve others and it's to be there for others and and knowing that others are there for you is important as well mm. so um, tell us a little bit about uh, <laughs> have you look into the crystal ball and tell us about your future we, we, I'm really curious to sort of where this is all heading for you I mean it seems to me that you you're taking on a role as a leader in the veteran community and you know you you were at a conference this week uh, serving as a, uh, a member of a student panel I believe mm -hmm. talking about how to support college student veterans in the SUNY system uh, and and so I'm wondering if that new responsibility and new voice for you is something that will continue into the future. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I don't think I ever went into, went back to school thinking like, I'm going to be this leader, this, you know, voice. Um, but I, and I always really wanted to do research to really understand what sort of, um, things or problems, challenges veterans have, whether it be in transitioning to college life, whether it be finding a job after their service, whether it be retiring for some veterans. So all those different challenges in life, you know, I think it's important to study those things. And I always thought that was what I was going to do. And more and more have I realized that we got to talk about it more and hmm. we got to, we got to like reach out and really advocate for these issues because you know veterans it's important to hear veteran stories and their voices um so i honestly am, am very uncomfortable talking about all this stuff to be honest but i realized the importance of it and why i need to get do it and why i need to get better at it yeah. Yeah. well i'm so glad that you decided you were able to come on the show today and i also want to share uh suny did a blog post about you a very good article about you and if anyone's interested in reading it it can be found at blog.suny.com 
edu. Currently, you're the alumni profile. You're on the main page. But if uh, people are searching for it a little afterwards, the title of it is An Education is Helping Her Form the Transition from Service to Community to Support of Others. And that's the title of the article. It was put out on November 12th. So I do recommend people maybe take a look at that. It's a, a really great article about you. And, and you're sharing a lot what you're doing in different avenues. You're through radio, through uh, this blog post where people are, you're being featured through the panel. You're getting your message out there about how SUNY and higher education can better serve veterans so they can adjust, uh, people can adjust better to college life and to create a better experience. So the work that you're doing, sharing your story, giving you know information and talking about your own experience is really helpful uh, to making an impact for uh, administrators. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. I mean, I, my number one message is, is to veterans and military affiliated students that there are supports and there are people here that care. And my other message is to everyone else on campus, reach out to a veteran, say hi, ask him how their day is going, you know, bridge that gap. Because I think we are two cultures that can really benefit from the knowledge that each brings. Yeah, that's a wonderful message. Thank you for all of the, the, thank you for your service, certainly to the country, but also to the university and the work that you're doing here on the behalf of students and veterans and, and even their family members in the community. I think it's, it's really incredibly important work and um, it's great that you're doing it. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if you've just tuned in, you're listening to The Social Workers, and we've been talking with Amanda Madison, who is a doctoral student in the School of Social Welfare, who is studying peer support amongst veterans and who is a veteran herself who served in the Army National Guard and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2008. And beyond and uh, and who is serving now as as really a, I believe a leading student veteran here on the U Albany campus and really starting to to bring that message about what it means to be a veteran and to change the university higher education culture around how we support veteran students so thanks again for being with Thank us you. yeah great thanks for having me You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany.